I'm Washington Ali and welcome to Project Become, a project uncovering the unspoken thoughts that stop us from living a life worth living. I'm not here to tell you what to do or who to be and I certainly don't have the answers. I'm just hoping to uncover the secrets of the world while speaking with explorers, dreamers, thinkers and creators. I hope we all find something that helps us accept who we've become and find something that helps us create someone we are proud of becoming. Welcome to Project We Come. Today, I'm joined by Jessica Neal, a cancer survivor turned coach, who has now taken all her experiences and insights on her healing journey around health, money, and relationships with ourselves to serve women who want to move into powerful versions of themselves. She takes impossible goals and makes it possible, and she's now constantly sharing and living this every single day in her work with her clients. So with that, Jess, I just want to say welcome. Um, thank you for being here. It's always a pleasure to speak with you. You're always powerful, vibrant, and also extremely insightful. Um, and um, I know I've just in introduced you, um, but could you let us know who you are? Uh, you've shared with us what you do and how powerful you are to the world, uh, but who is Jess? Wow, man, the first question. Well, first of all, Washington, Thank you. Thank you for inviting me on this um, project become. Uh, I think that's very um, fitting for uh, for what I do, because, uh, you know, I when we, we talk about impossible goals and I spoke, you know, you give that in the introduction. Uh, impossible goals is a place to come from. So you've got to become that actually internally before you you move out. Uh, so Going back to your question of who's Jess, who's Jessica, you know, I would say I am con I'm a continuous student. I think that will be the best way to uh, to put that. And I somehow figured out a way to combine my passions, uh, what I love, into my hustles, into my business, in into my creative flow, so that I am literally able to just live it um, from a very authentic place every single day. And, you know, that's really that in a nutshell, because my work really is such a huge part of who I am. And I take that to bed mm. and I wake up with it. <laughs> um, yeah. So I hope that answers part of who's jazz. Obviously, there are many different sides. But right now, this is really uh, what, I, what I am most of the time. Right. I love that uh, you take your work. You, take, you said you take your work to bed, um, uh, and when you wake up, bed, uh, wake up as well. Like, tell me, um, what has started that passion? What has driven that passion? Oh, well, um, do you know, I think the question uh, when I well, let's take us back seven years ago, or, or well, actually eight, when I was first diagnosed with leukemia, things turn 180 a lot of people know that these you know a near-death experience is usually one of those life-changing experience uh like life-changing events that i think i was i'm very honored to have so let's move a little bit back from eight years so maybe about 10 years ago i was asking the question to myself like why am i not feeling fulfilled in my life why am i not loving what i do why am i just not able to figure things out and actually feel purposeful so from 20 i think 2021 really started this entire journey i was diagnosed with leukemia on 24 and it was funny because that year was the most pivotal year of my life when i literally moved from a career that i didn't love uh, I dropped professional accounting and I went into really, you know, people servicing. And that was really when I recognized that, oh my God, that's what I really love to do. Uh, but then when I was diagnosed with leukemia, then it was like, I cannot, so it was a corporate job in American Express and I loved it. But then something inside of me was just still saying like, this is still not it. I'm not, I'm not having the flexibility or the freedom of time. I'm not doing something for myself and just didn't fit right. So when I was diagnosed with leukemia, that was the opportunity. After about three years of healing, um, 
yeah it was then when i really was like i'm gonna figure this out you know even though it's really hard mm. i'm in a lot of debt but that you know that goes the journey that is it's the start of the journey of entrepreneurial journey really to figure things out yeah. and that take i mean that took oh my god washington goodness me took me a good four five years to finally i'm here today telling people mm. that yo guys you can do this too you really really can um mm. and just more polished more refined and so you know what i i'm more than happy to take to take my work to bed with me <laughs> and wake up with it <laughs> and like let's do this yeah. every single day you know it is a very genuine thing it's not it's, it's i can't i can't make this up yeah that's really beautiful and you know what, what when listening to you it sounded like when you're working your corporate job um and, and you came to the, that epiphany around 20 uh 20 uh 21 that you're wearing it seemed to me as if you're wearing masks you're wearing a face um that wasn't true to who you were you're wearing uh, something that became he heavy and mm -hmm. um ironically having leukemia allowed you to remove those masks reshape yourself um and recreate yourself so t tell us about that journey if you don't mind yes so um i always say acute leukemia so for those of you who's listening to this acute leukemia is a form of blood cancer so what's interesting about this cancer is that it's not targeted in one specific area like liver cancer or breast cancer or brain cancer you know it's not specific but the cancer cells are literally all over your body so oh, sure. if you like, that's why it's a little bit more deadly, you know, if you're not, yeah. So you've got to take drastic measures. Uh, chemotherapy was, was one of it. So I, however, you know, this is, first of all, I was, I, I always say that acute leukemia saved my life. In fact, this is one of the titles of a book that I was writing midway, how acute leukemia saved my life, because it literally was the alarm bell. I recognize that, first of all, I've n I haven't been truthful to myself. I wasn't happy. I wasn't happy in my career. I wasn't happy in my relationship. Um, I was just scared all the time. I was walking on eggshells, worrying about what somebody else would think. Just, you know, until leukemia came and Thank God, till today, it didn't hurt me. I was just exhausted. I had bruises, bleeding, you know, through the monthly cycles, but it was just perpetual bleeding. So mm -hmm. it wasn't painful though. I didn't experience the pain that I saw my father went through or my grandfather went through or my grandmother went through with, you know, throat cancer or pancreatic cancer. So mm -hmm. I was very grateful to that, uh, that life could give me the opportunity to wake up but without all that pain, the pain only mm. came during chemotherapy, right? But it was like, oh God, Jessica. Yes, it's a, it's quite a deadly one because you know the cells are not targeted. It's, cancer cells are not, you know, this is everywhere. It's in the body, so it's a do or die thing. And what I recognized was, oh my God, if you think that you can be unhappy all this while and stay in this space and continue this throughout and say you want to live with cancer you got this all wrong girl like you gotta like stop that that thing now so yeah it was it was a do or die thing i had my hands are tight i had no choice but hey you either die yeah. or you live right oh, you so live. yeah that that's the story yeah i lived <laughs> live <laughs> <laughs> yeah exactly that's yeah. wonderful and and i guess like you know some people don't i guess hmm, i want to say some people don't make the choice some people see it as it as how you were previously seeing it right i've got i've got leukemia i've got cancer and this is how it is and this is how i'm go going to continue my life yet you had the power to or you had the creativity or you had the fruition to say actually i actually either want to choose this or i don't want to choose this what about that what is it about you that you were able to generate such power to say hey i want to live i no longer want to live with cancer um um yeah, tell me, please. Like, what is it about you that can create such power? 
Um, I, I think, okay, so this is going to be very relevant for a, a lot of us with any challenge or problem that we face in our lives. And that is owning responsibility for whatever that's showing up. So mm. I owned responsibility or I took responsibility for the fact that I could have created this. And it's kind of what hard do you mean to by say that? because, oh, I could have created my cancer. I mm. might have played a part in this. And, well, further down the road, I, I realized that, you know, signs show that, okay, our emotions affect our immune system and fear, organic fear is very good. It's like no matter how how much nutrient you put into your body, nutrients, uh, if you have fear and you perpetually stay in that state, your immune system is going to erode itself. So I would mm. say, did I, when I look back and I ask myself, like, what is, did I, well, I suppose at that point, I was at a point of recognizing that, yo, Jess, you know, um, whether you like this, like it or not, I think you got to own that a part of you created this. And because I was already into that, you know, metaphysics, I was into that, you know, how our mind signs and how that influences our body. I was like, if I created this and I was and powerful enough to do this to myself, that means I can undo that. And for some weird, naive thing, I believe that. Mm. I believe it, it was a, it was a, I can, I can do this. So was it naivety? Well, whatever it was, it, it worked, you know? Um, be, but then do I have to keep my belief up? Yes, because there were, there were moments when uh, cancer was real. Like it, when I say cancer was real, I mean, you've got tubes, you know, I still got the scar here. I was looking at it the other day. You've got the uh, IV tubes stuck in, it's called the PICC line uh, for chemotherapy, mm. you know, to be injected into the bloodstream. Now, the problem, the, the, it's awful because chemotherapy burns, is toxic enough to burn your skin. Yeah. So it has to be, you know, injected into the bloodstream, into the heart, more so. So mm -hmm. um, anyway, it was hard to have experienced the, to, to be experiencing the physicalness every single day so the point of me needing to keep up my belief in okay just you create this you're gonna have to create this or create something new but the best way i could put it was i created this or part of me did that means if i i i can only we can only change what we own we can only change what we take responsibility for and say you know what i did this let me do something mm. about that Mm. That's really the perspective for the angle I came in with. Yeah, that's really powerful, you know. And I, I want to touch on the, where you're saying uh, it, the naivety part, right? And I'm thinking, like, mm -hmm. yeah, hundred percent, it's naivety. Like uh, a lot of people um, who, um, who, a lot of people who would look into this world, and uh, maybe they're religious, or maybe they're just. Um, um what's the word nihilistic or maybe they're just very stuck up and stubborn they're like how dare you think you can change something how dare you think um you can do something how how dare you have the audacity to believe you have healing powers like a god or jesus christ you know and like i i want to touch on that because it's so that naivety for me also is a, an extremely important part of my journey because it allow it gave it gives access to building momentum it gives access for you yeah. seeing a different possibility of your life and, and of the world you know and, and i think that's super super powerful and super super amazing and you know i i think yeah um so yeah do you have anything yeah. to say to that because you, you you look like you're yeah. flying right now <laughs> yeah no i i i would like to give a different perspective to what people call naivety Mm, and please. this is how I, I coach my clients through. And I'm like, no, it's a different reality. And different realities will create different possibilities. And you can buy into your, your perspective and your reality. But my question is, is that working for you? So mm. let's not put the label on naivety. You know, I mean, if somebody's going to say you're naive and, and you know, when I was 24, and somebody calls me naive and I'm like, yeah, you know, I, I, I stink, I suck. Right. But moving, you know, ha, ha, now that I'm here, 
I suddenly recognized that really, I was just gifted with the ability to to maybe to see, uh, like how the Wright brothers could see th that, um, or was it, I don't know if they were the original invention. I know that somebody else invented it, but yeah. somebody could see that that is a possibility that we can fly through air. Mm. Naivety. Somebody, Elon Musk, could see that we're going to go to Mars at some point. We will. Naivety. Mm. Or just a different reality tapped it, you know, because we are tapped into what is possible. That's why mm. the impossible goals is something that there's no such thing as that. Really, there is no such thing as impossible goals, just unrealistic time frame that we put on it. Like we need this by tomorrow. Or, so mm. I was battling with time in the, with leukemia. I, I was in battling with time in the time, in time and space because I might get relapsed tomorrow. I might get a relapse tomorrow if I don't follow the doctor's uh, rules. And I didn't actually, I, I stopped after the third cycle. I mean, I wouldn't recommend that for anybody who, who is not as, as stubborn as I, you know, no. like I was just able to see a possibility and, and it's just a different reality. Yeah. Like a different perspective of what could be. Yeah. A hundred percent. It doesn't make us any less, you, you, you know, when somebody's going to come at you and say, you're really nice. I'm like, mm, really? <laughs> really? Just... You know, I, I, you're living in two <laughs> different paradigms, right? I completely agree with you. And like, when, when operating from a space of possibility, or, or should I say, uh, for me, I think if you're operating from a place of like that naivety, let's call it, right? Uh, and for me, I'm just using naivety because it's the word that popped up, right? Um, but that na naivety yeah. is not naivety. It's allowing yourself to be a clearing it's allowing yourself to be open to the possibility that means anything that can happen that means whatever intention you put into the space can move forward into your intention move forward into the future and it's really interesting like we listen to i, I know we listen to people like gary v and gary v is like yeah move fast 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 but have patience bro but have patience and it's like it's the exact same thing you know you want to you want to, if you want to achieve your goal you want to move as hard as quick as and as fast as you possibly can yet it's the expectation of that result that really holds us and confines us back and from what you're sharing it's like well 100 you, you you had the openness and you had the possibility mindset to take you through onto that journey yet um were you expecting to be healed was that a part of, was that a part mm. of your strategy um I, I would be really interested to hear that mm, mm -hmm. okay that's great thank you for, for for going into the expectation part because very often mm. that's what throw us off course with anything that we do including my my um you know my cancer audio right and it's it's perfect that's why i love how relevant this is for anybody who who wants to uh, you know what that was that achieve a goal achieve a dream achieve a vision um and this is this is something that will be interesting so i've talked about this so many times and i call it call this the money garden i love talking about abundance and material mindset so mm. Imagine us, um, you know, we're, we're imagine. So I call this money garden. We, we're going to put this in a spiral rather than just linear. And the reason is because money like energy is not linear. Mm. So to me, in my world, in my reality, money can come to you in many different forms, but we, so we're going to start in the middle of this garden and it's like a spiral. So imagine like this, the shape of a snail, but you're spiraling out. Now you're starting mm. in the middle and you're going to walk around the circle. And as you walk, you're going to plant these seeds. And these seeds are actually avenues of money. Uh, so yeah, okay. avenues of sources. Yeah. And what mm -hmm. you're going to do is you're going to have to provide the conditions for them, the sun, the water, the fertilizer, so that they would survive. And by in scientific terms, that's what we need to do. The same way where when we want to get a job or we want to create our passion business, we got to pick up the phone. We got to maybe go on the internet. These are the conditions. We got to speak to somebody, right? Now, mm. let's go on to the expectation and the timing of the harvest. The reason mm. why you're going to continue going around the money garden and plant these seeds 
is because you cannot actually expect the money to harvest from this particular seed tomorrow or three days because sometimes in some seeds are as per season it's not going to mm. come out now it's going to maybe come out in a, it may take weeks months years or though there are some things that can be harvested very quickly so if i'm going to plant this money see i'm going to sell you this washington uh and yes. this is only you know i bought this for three thousand you can take this for one thousand so i can you know maybe you take this up i harvest the money by tomorrow Mm. But let's talk about our businesses. It might take years. The expectation is that we don't expect. We cannot dictate mm. when. We cannot dictate when this is going to come. And and this is where they in the you know there's this uh, woo woo world. We call it surrendering, right? The spiritual stuff. We <laughs> surrender to that. So really, we don't have to like oh let's surrender to that. But if we just look at this money garden example. It makes mm. perfect sense that you cannot expect the seeds to grow at a certain time. And the worst thing is mm. that we can dig up the seeds just to see if it's growing. It is, everybody oh, does that. Wow. <laughs> you know? And then you have to repot the seed and then it has to re germinate, it has to re. Oh my goodness. Thank oh you. My goodness. Thank you. Yeah. So, coming back to my cancer thing, though, that's where I learned this that I actually have to accept the possibility that I might not survive and I might die. And that's mm. the hardest truth that I had to, and that's, I mean, thanks to my, my, my mentor already, my, my spiritual teacher at that point. I mean, she was, she, it sounded really cynical and I, it was very hard, mm. but you can, you really, really can almost like, yes. Okay. This is my fail. I might get a relapse and I might die tomorrow or in three days. Mm -hmm. I was mm -hmm. asked that question. If you die in three days, what are you going to do? And I was like, I won't wow. die. But he's like, what if you die? And I was like, mm. I see what she's trying to do. I was annoyed that she did that, but I see it. I was like, right. That surrender or releasing the expectation was what moved me to find my alternative treatment within the mm. next two hours of letting go. I don't, I don't wow. know how to say that. It's not a deliberate you know, elaborate thing of, oh my God, let's surrender. Let's meditate into this. It really was just a, okay. Okay. Mm. I got this. I, I, I get it. I get it now. Right. Mm. This, this, I might, I might fail. Right. You know, but yeah, it, mm -hmm. but it doesn't mean I stopped taking the action. You see, it didn't mm. mean that I, I was like, okay. But then I went online and just, I'd release some resistance to, you know, do some research. And it was really that then within just five clicks or three clicks, I found my healer. I found my treatment. Mm -hmm. Let's go ahead. You were saying something. Mm. That's really interesting. Um, like w where you've just taken, uh, taken me to is like a, a really, really wonderful space. So I, I want to share this concept that I learned. Um, that I read like, the other day, just listening to um, uh, listen to an audiobook, and they were talking about this thing called the drift, and uh, it was like every single country has its own drift, and the drift of Hawaii is um, happy people drinking beers by the beach mm. and just getting on with life, very chill people, very slow, calm paced world, and then let's say the drift for Malaysia or the drift for even New York is very fast paced. It's very hectic. It's very go, 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 must, 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 must. Um, and, uh, and each place having its own drift. And it was like, what I heard from your sharing is that you were in your own flow. Um, and what that, what your flow came with was, um, was, um, how do I say it? What your flow, flow came with was, um, a, was uh, was a rushness you know um and, and your rushness was not as at the same time as your drift uh, and as soon as you surrendered it's like you're being completely shifted and also the drift you you met your drift you know you're no longer mm -hmm. moving too fast you're no longer moving too fast to to maybe move past your drift and move, get to another seed and maybe five six seven eight months later but you were mo you're moving right at the perfect speed to catch your drift at that moment um oh yeah and wow it's like that release that surrender um 
something else that pops up for me is that your being completely shifted. So uh, your being moving from rushness to calm, open, even more open, because uh, I, I wouldn't say you weren't open, but like the rushness was like you were you you were heading in a direction, you know, and because you were moving so quickly, you didn't take the time or maybe hadn't have taken the time to stop and research in the same places you would have researched if you were even more open and in that space of surrender, like you said, you know, so it's uh, it's 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 very fascinating that when what happens when of course, there's always a drift that's happening around the world, right? There's always there's always emotion that's occurring. Um, yet when you shifted your being, when you shifted something internally with inside you, whether you want to call it surrender, whether you want to call it calmness, or whether you want to call it whatever you want to call it, right? Uh, when when you shifted <laughs> innately, that it, the the whole world shifted for you effortlessly, like you're saying as well, right? Uh, so yeah. it's 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 magical. And, and what's interesting is my my partner then he did hours and hours of like hours of research so he would literally spend like eight hours a day or you know four hours like when he's not with me in the hospital to research on the alternatives right he's done way more research than me but he has not found nothing right <laughs> so what i'm saying is experiencing different realities are really interesting because mm. one person who done less you know using less effort and catching the drift as you say it catching mm. that wave right and i'm able to find what i need in less than two hours i was just calculating the time of me you know okay fine yes i might die okay right and like just doing a little bit of breathing <laughs> chilling out okay you know i might die tomorrow right but then finding the solution <laughs> oh yeah <laughs> um it, and it's not it's nothing drastic it was just yeah okay you know what i got this i got it okay i got it this is like you know mm. you're just having that conversation with yourself but the point i'm trying to make is how effortless the the action can be and for a lot of people who has to up, exert a lot of, of effort right maybe this information for you would be like you know what i need to work so hard and i get it i get it i get it i get it sometimes we need to exert you know when you're learning something in a learning curve and it's kind of like really steep yeah mm. right um but i mean th like you say that's that drift like it's that it's and it's it's just that one intention when you're able to tap into that flow and something just miraculously open up and you're able to receive or achieve results that maybe somebody who's exerting the same amount of you know pressing the same amount of energy on the, the pedal on the gas you're not they're not getting anywhere Maybe mm. because they haven't released the brakes and you've just released the brakes through releasing resistance. Yeah, know? exactly. That was such an amazing analogy. I love that. I yeah. really, really love that. That is, that is powerful. <laughs> you know, so like, yeah, you've had a wild, wild journey. You've had a really wild ride. And like, I want, I want to, I want to shift forward into um, your current present moment, where you're at right now. I know you shared a bit about it uh, in the beginning, but yeah, please, like, where are what's happening right now in the world of jazz? Oh, wow. <laughs> a lot. I am, um, yeah, one thing that's in the forefront of my mind is called Project 22. 2022. Mm. I know you have Project Become. Mine is Project 2022. So that's really me uh, with a bunch of ladies and obviously my individual clients. Um, but mm -hmm. it's about making this year the best year yet around impossible goals, around getting out of their closet, you know, around getting good at telling the truth, the voice, mm. boundaries, um, and just being so fascinated by it, it, literally applying my experience. So, you know, I'm all about, we call it manifestation or in another term that people will resonate more with is achieving goals, right? Mm. And we're really, really taking uh, my clients through that and really, you know, helping them see things in, in a way that will shift their world, like how, how it's, it's shifted, how I've shifted mine. So really, mm. yeah, that's, that's really what's happening. You know, everything that we, we're speaking about is, yeah, it's just really what's going on. <laughs> it's, it's that's a here. <laughs> that's powerful so you so you've take you've gone on an incredible healing journey uh, and you've identified ways that actually you can support guide and 
coach people to have similar results and even better, you know? Um, and I guess, um, I, I, do you know what? I love the idea of the word project, right? Because for me, the reason why it's project become and not just become a yada, yada, yada is because a project to me is something that is continuous. You know, it's something that's almost never ending. It's something that's wow. always, um, that's always, it's always, there's always something else, you know, there's something bigger that's happening. And the people that we have within that can can contribute to that space, right? It can bring whatever they have mm -hmm. and within that space they can create in that context and everything like that. So 2022 is going to be the biggest year for uh for for your uh for for your people, you know? So tell me why is that so important to you? What why is it so important oh. that other people are unstoppable? Oh wow. Man. <laughs> Look so I say 2022 is like the best year yet. So I always say that to myself. This year is going to be my best year yet. And it did. And I move into next year and it's like, oh my God, this year is better than the last. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. Because I can do that, right? And because it's, it's not just some, you know, some, you know, you know, like a fake. It's a, it's a real thing. It's a real mm. phenomenon for me, right? And do you know what was the, the interesting thing about this is, why is it so important for other people to become unstoppable? Because the truth is very selfish. It feels freaking good to be here. Wow. Yeah, it fucking does. And so why? And let's share something and let's make some dough out of it. You know, I'm, let's just be really honest about that, right? Um, <laughs> for me, it's, look, it's creating win-win situations. Uh, for people and that idea just really literally came out of the blue and I love that money like speed so just following where, mm. where the drift brings me you know mm. um but um it, it's it's amazing it really is amazing to be here and I, and to be honest again on a very selfish level I have been in a place where I sometimes wish okay here's that I wish that I had that resource <laughs> I wish that I have a book somebody telling me this is what's possible for you mm. that's why i'm working on impossible goals i'm actually you know writing that that pdf or book or whatever you want to call it but literally something that i would like to hear in my head or hear in my audio you know okay this is how do you make this possible what is the thing that you need to think about so that's what i'm gift you know like really putting it out there for my, my bunch of mm. my, my group of ladies um powerful Powerful. Like why? So, because it's fun. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Why not? You know, I, I, I think helping other people for me, helping other people for being myself is, is the best job in the whole entire world. Right. You can't go wrong. Yeah. It's, it's so fulfilling when you see other people achieve their goals or have clarity on who it is. They are, what it is they want and, and, and just have the balls to make the decisions for their own life. Right. It, it's, it's, it's fucking wild. It is what it is. It's, it's absolutely amazing. Um, yeah. yeah. So I love that. I love that. So who is, uh, on. I, I... Yeah, I, I was about to say also, you know, um, I, I have become a lot more, I would say specific with the, the people that I'm more, I'm interested to help. And the honest truth is, um, I have such, and I think the honest truth is because I feel kind of bad to exclude uh, men, even though, I, you know, I, I do have one male client. Um, or I, I work, my mastermind group is filled with all, all men, you know, it's not like I'm trying mm. to exclude men. It, deep down inside of me, there's this, there's an actual drive to, especially with the women who have children, women working with who have children. Um, mm, yeah, it's really, I mean, even as I say it, I feel it in my gut, you know, it's just that drive to help them become better mothers, help them become better partners. Uh, and create this 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 family unit for safe family unit for their children. Um, mm. I think this stems from a very deep because I, I maybe I don't have that. I, I didn't feel like I have that, and mm. I am in such a, spa a blessed blessed space to be able to support these women. Uh, so yeah, you know, I, I talked about okay, you know, yes, I make dough 
and make the doors and I make the mula. But the, re the reality is making making abundance or creating abundance actually helps me help people who cannot afford or have the resources. Mm -hmm. um, so I, that's a, a lot of fun thing. But, you know, underneath that, it, it's I'm also constantly looking out for opportunities to, to really see who can I, can I really support, who I see was in a similar space that I was and just knowing that you know what girl this is a whole world is possible for you mm. if you you if you you come with me come with me you, you know mm. what I'm saying I'm not I'm not trying to market that you know my, my stuff is is for free right? mm. <laughs> oh, I, that's a boundary there where you know I, I noticed that clients when they pay for something they show up um but the, the in here when I'm when I when I share with you about you know helping women who who have children, um, yeah, really, and some of them don't have resources, and it actually pains me, you know. And I suppose mm. it's, it's the selfish agenda that I have is I wish I remember a point when I didn't have resources either. So, yeah. It's, it's really like so many things tying together, being selfish, being having fun, earning the money, but also knowing that, you know, all of that actually c uh, creates such a container for me to really actually serve. Um, so, yeah, that's just the whole thing. You know, mm. why, why, why do I do this? Right. It's 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 that. Yeah. All encompassing. Yeah. Powerful, really powerful. You know, the world is in the state that it's in right now. And I guess what is it that you what are your thoughts of where the world was how people responded to each other how people um treat each other um family homes broken family homes meaning uh, one parent households and things like that how um has that impacted your work at all or has that impacted your world? reasons of working with single money a single, uh, single children. Sorry. I mean, single. You mean single mothers as well? Uh, are you talking about the how the world was in terms of yeah. the, the entire world at large, or y yes, the entire world at large? Or take well, it's an open question for you to take as right. as you wish, really. Right, right. Um, mm. uh, I I think. Yeah, well, let's talk about resources, right? Um, and and um, and education, and because I don't really know how to start with this, right? So I come from a family. Let's start with me. I came from a family where it, my mom was a single mother, is a single mother, right? Because I lost my father. Um, and I came from a place where it was completely lack of resources from day one, even though my mother really did provide a good, uh, good one for me. But so there were expectations, cultural expectations that eventually molded me to behave in certain ways, make certain decisions. And I was talking to my mom the other day that, you know, I wish that I hadn't uh, tried so hard to prove myself to, to, to you or, or needing to prove myself with, with needing to be good at something I was, I wasn't good at, which is professional accounting, um, that has mm. brought me and kept me distant and separated away from my family and not experiencing that and missing that. And I didn't know that that was what I missed. A lot of stuff that I missed uh, when my sisters were home. And I, I just actually didn't know that until, until last week. I was like, oh, wow, did this happen? I didn't even know that. Um, mm. why I point that out is growing up in a home where the mother has now we're talking about masculine and feminine now like the, the patriarchal society you, you, you know and again i'm not i'm not i'm not a feminist <laughs> uh but i'm very i'm very mindful of the masculine and the, the feminine thing having grown up in a family without a masculine a male energy when my mother has to be the holder of both um has made me very mindful with that energy because i have i do notice that women who have children even though they might be in a relationship or in married, happily, happily, quote unquote, married, um, the roles, something's really off with that, right? Or it could be a single mm. mother too and needing to balance all of that. And I, I understand mm. that. I just, 
I understand, I understand what they're going through. Mm -hmm. uh, so that's really, yeah, that, that's underneath that really interests me a mm. lot because I know yeah. that if the mothers are not taken care of, you can mm -hmm. bet that the children will be affected. I'm sorry to have to say that unless yeah, the mother 100%. is doing a great job and then mo most mothers try. Okay. We only do the best that we can, but I'm not yeah. a mother. I don't plan to be one, <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> but, but I, that puts me in a position where I can do my best for these women, you know? Yeah. That, that's really interesting. You said something really interesting about the dynamics of um, um, men and women, or married men and women, or just men and women together. Um, wh wh you said something like it troubles you. What about that is wor worries you? What about that is um, what about that do you find curious? Right. Uh, I feel like I, I feel like the 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 female. Right. I I think our roles in society is a little messed up at the moment. That's why I, I'm very clear with I'm not a feminist, even though I'm out here running my career. Um, mm -hmm. I'm very mindful with with that, right? Because if we get our roles confused in, a, I'm talking about in a relationship with, with a man or you in a relationship with a woman. If we get our roles confused, mm -hmm. uh, unless it's clearly, the roles are clearly defined, you really can get a pretty messed up relationship. Mm. where the, the, yeah, the woman is not feeling yeah not feeling taken care of and the man is not stepping up to his potential because he's into his feminine too much and it could be the mm. woman's fault because the woman is oh i can do everything all by myself and i don't need you okay you, you know mm. and so it's gonna screw yeah. up the dynamics so much that that's really interesting i think that's mm, i think that's what's causing yeah. a lot of imbalance in the society that's really interesting um, because I, I've been thinking about that as well because we li we live in a society where I guess women are encouraged to boss up um, and, and this, that, the other, which I think is amazing. It's what you're doing, right? Um, and I feel as if that what is or has been perceived to boss up is to boss up in what everyone in culture hates narcissistic egotistical oh, yeah. mm. men you know and yeah. that's what so many people's idea is to boss up um or to be uh quote unquote alpha the word the key word that's being thrown around right now and it's like well you're right it doesn't work in relationships because if there are, let's say, if there are two alphas, well, depending on your who you are, if there are two alphas, that doesn't really normally work. There should be, there's always a leader, and there's also there's always someone who supports the leader, right? Um, so, so it's, mm. yeah, so that's where the polarity is, though. Like it's on the scale. So I think what we define as narcissistic alpha thing is more of toxic from masculine. And then there's mm. the women who can be toxic too, where we are in too much of a one feminine, and we're constantly you know, um, insecure, finding, picking fights because we don't know how to handle our own emotions. You, you, you see mm. that? So what I'm trying to say is we can both men, men, male and female can go into like extreme spectrums. Um, and sometimes the, the woman might have to step up and sometimes mm. hold the space for the man, depending on what their preferences are. And yeah. sometimes it's about figuring the man has out to where snap you're up. at. Yeah, hundred <laughs> percent. I completely agree. And like, uh, what I can't stand is um, um, uh, the whole entire co culture either perpetuating that all men have to do this in a relationship and all women have to do this in a relationship. When if you've ever been in a bloody relationship, you know sometimes that the roles are switching like this. There's always there's always going to be a lead in one direction There's and there's always going to be a supporter. But you know that if you're in a healthy, committed relationship, that everyone is willing to do what they can for the relationship. It's, it's, not, it's not about power. It's not about who's more superior. It's not about the alpha. It's not about the beta. It's about making the yeah. relationship work. And I feel like, for me, you, oh, yeah. you really... It, 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 for me, it's like everyone's forgot about how to make a relationship work. And I think it's important. I love the work that you're doing because people don't know how to make things work because those 
rules have been broken and the rules I'm really happy the rules have been broken because they've allowed the space for everyone to be able to become who it is that they want to become right and I I can't stand it because the, there's so much chaos surrounding the whole entire world no one knows who it is they should be or how it is they should be everyone is um. no not no one knows everyone's just choosing one direction everyone's just choosing one one option rather than everyone's choosing what society wants them to be rather than choosing what it is that they genuinely want to be you know i know so many um extremely feminine women that are too scared to say hey i want to be a housewife you know uh, and i know so Ooh. literally wow. like they're too scared to say that i want to i want to be at home and what um and my husband goes to work and of course they don't mind picking up a job but they want to spend majority of the time being a homemaker you know and i too wow. know you know and it's and it's there's so many voices that i i hear of people saying i'm only doing this because i was told by so and so to 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 be successful and and it's like it's there's this whole entire vacuum of everyone fighting to be successful and everyone wow. unintentionally being left out of well I see myself in this position yet if i am to say that my girlfriends are going to say oh my goodness so you want to be yada 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 or in a guy's perspective all my boys are going to say oh you need to you need to you have to be a man you have to eat 12 egg yolks and this that the other and because you don't eat 12 egg, egg yolks you're not a man you know and and for me um to, sorry for ranting it's not about the egg yeah. yolks. It's about how you show up in the relationship. Are you able to take responsibility of the things that you've said that you want to take responsibility of? You know, and that goes for both yeah. parties. And and if everyone's able to do that, if everyone's able to do that, then I, I feel as if like eighty percent of all the drama that we see on social media, that we see maybe in our <laughs> even like what you probably see in your coaching as well, is will be reduced by a significant amount. Yeah, and also, thank you for pointing out the part on responsibility, because I feel like that is also the issue. Where mm. So, at first, it starts with somebody telling the truth about something, and that is, yeah, do you know what? I actually would like to be home to take care of the children. Mm. Right? And I thought that was brilliant. I thought that was amazing that he said that. Okay, I actually would like to be home, and I think you need to get a job. <laughs> you know <laughs> yeah it's a hard yeah. conversation to have it's so hard washington i i mean i had to face that myself mm. not that the guy was bad not that he's bad it's just the wrong move in his uh, business decisions that eventually really uh, broke things up i mean the good thing that came out that was obviously i'm here today I am who I am and I'm in this position where I'm able to help these ladies to go, Hey, uh, nobody's going to speak your truth for you, girl. Mm. Right. And nobody's going to take that. Who's going to, who's really, who's going to talk to your husband again? Unless, okay, both of you go for relationship counseling and let's put it down in the open. But even then, if you're not mm. willing, somebody's not willing to tell the truth, ain't nothing's going to happen. Yeah. And then the next part stuff. comes with taking responsibility. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm. Literally. Right. You know, and it's, it's that element of responsibility that really never gets, that really never gets grasped because responsibility then turns, uh, like in, in my coaching, every, in, even in my real life world, it, if you avoid responsibility, you play the blame game you know and, and even if you try to take on re and, and a lot of people think taking on responsibility means that hey you said you're going to clean the dishes you didn't clean the dishes and now you're insert insulting name right uh, and, and it's it's not that it's not that responsibility is having the conversation of hey abcd like you're saying and not judging that person and not not making that person a bad person you're allowed to be frustrated you're allowed to be annoyed yet you pointing a finger at that person doesn't create an environment to sustain love you know it mm. doesn't create contain an environment to sustain enjoyment for one another um and it again like without the realness like you're living in a fairy tale land where well how how do i say it 
Well, if you uh, build a sandcastle at the beach, right, which is, and then you start playing fairy tale games, by the end of the day, the be- the uh, the water from the sea would have already wi- would have wiped down the the castle. You know, all it takes is that s- small little, whoosh, and your whole entire sandcastle falls apart. And that's what people are doing. Oh, not having those conversations, not doing this, that, the other. So, yeah, I, I couldn't mm. agree with you um, any more than that. Mm-hmm. And the best the thing I, I'd love to, to ask uh, is how are we contributing to the situation? Where yeah. if, if something's not well, really working out, like the good and the bad, <laughs> how are we contributing to that? There must There is yeah. not something that we're doing. A hundred percent, you know, and you know, what, what I've realized is that a hundred percent, there's always something that we're contributing and for a very, very few minority, which probably isn't the person who's listening to this video right now, right? <laughs> and I wanna, it probably isn't the person listening to this video right now is that maybe that person's not the person you're meant to be with because we were so so some people are so wanting to stay in a relationship that they shouldn't have got into in the first place. And not to say that person was a bad person, but that person wasn't a fit for you. Um, and so the choices, the decisions, the conversations and what we put out into the world is how we're all contributing to this, you know? And if we're making choices as if we're, uh, six seven year olds just seeing the shiny object and picking it up and throwing it at the wall and uh playing with it and then getting bored of it and then chucking it on the floor we're not contributing something we're not contributing positive not positivity we're not contributing something that is going to forward the world to love to compassion to enjoyment you know uh, and, mm. and you really you, you've led me on a really really great monologue to ask you spin <laughs> yeah mm-hmm. where where do you think where, what of the world what what do you think is becoming uh what is to become of the world in the next i don't know um in the next five years in the next 10 years what do you think or, or what do you hope well this is so funny what was i telling my mother about this i was saying Oh man, this is this is such a great question. But you know, I I I was I was talking about this the other day, and I can't remember. But you know, first of all, I mean, the world is obviously going to be really really different, especially with you know the metaverse coming up, things like mm. this. Um, but but I I also can't. Okay, here's the thing: we have a lot of AI coming up as well. And the funny thing was, I had something or i can't really remember what it was but i feel like even though the world's going to go forward but i also have this feeling like we are still we're going to fall back a lot more into ourselves mm. um and the reason it's almost like it's the human becoming a little bit more human uh in spite of everything uh, uh, that is that's go well actually because of everything that's happening because I think that the the pandemic has created some sort of awareness on how I don't know something about me being cooped up at home mm-hmm. that has um, yeah I think it it has shined and that's only my perspective but I noticed that it has shined the some awareness on how human human beings I'm, I'm not talking about the few that are happy to be alone like me you know but i'm talking about my understanding uh of how human connection is, is imp- actually important we can we can do all of this a lot i mean i think it saves me time saves me money to be i don't have to fly all over or go into traffic and waste more time but mm-hmm. it uh, the pandemic did actually highlight how how i actually miss uh, you know, in-person sessions or a retreat, for example. And I wonder, I really, really wonder how, right, here's that, where's that, the metaverse, how that is actually going to change the landscape of the work that we do, healing work. You know, how is that going to combine everything in the, the digital universe uh, 
in a way to actually accelerate more growth in the, the human, in the mental development or emotional development. So, yeah, I mean, I know we're going into the metaverse and, and, and all that, but that's really where I feel that the world's going to. Mm -hmm. Uh, and I'm very curious, yeah. really, really curious how that's going to pan out for coaching and education. Wow. Yeah, I, I think, you know, I, um, I've actually had a really interesting conversation um, with, uh, let me hop in my text um, and, and find mm -hmm. his name because I'll be quite annoyed if I don't know. Kenneth, um, who studies... Um, neuroscience at the university of oxford i had a conversation with him last week saturday or sunday um and he was sharing with me that his interest in neuroscience is how to allow people to reach elevated states of consciousness using technology and i think that that 100 percent matches where you believe that the world is going um and, and i think it's rather quite incredible because i reckon that we're gonna we're all going to be plugged into the metaverse well if you choose to or not choose to be um and mm -hmm. with mm -hmm. being choosing with choosing to be plugged into the metaverse comes with the option of um upgrading your mind with maybe Neuralink. i'm seeing those two technologies possibly coming together um and also i also see another group of people who are going to become nomads they're just going to be living let's say van life or they're going to be setting up different societies different um communities that actually just live off the land just because they'd rather not participate in the world of oh, yeah. um the metaverse you know and, and i think that there are going to be a very few probably like me who's going to jump in and out because i'm really interested in the metaverse i am and at the same time i'm super interested yeah. in maintaining my peace you know um yeah so me too I, so, so yeah that's that, that's um that's uh what i what i take away from uh, what you're sharing and really before we close up jess i, I just would love to mm. hear from yourself like what is going to become of jessica nia what is going to become of you in the next five ten years Oh my goodness. Um, so I'm about to say, oh my God, and then went to my goodness. Uh, I, I, man, do I dare to say a thought leader? I think this is really where I'm heading towards. Um, mm. I think I, I, I want, you know, because there's just a lot of, you know, about manifestation and et cetera. Uh, mm. But I'm really, really looking to see how I can, you know, take a lot of those principles and really move them to be very applicable in day to day, you know, in, in mm. people's challenges, actual life challenges and, and goals. And the best part about being a cancer survivor is that once you've done one of the more in the, like, was that impossible stuff or people will say that you're mm. crazy, you know, then once you've done crazy stuff like that, then you begin to see what other things are possible. So yeah, really bringing that into this, this realm, you know, really, um, yeah, expanding that influence, working with more amazing people like you, um, and really that that's that's you know just just going to go up from here. Amazing! Listen, thank you so much for being here. Thank you so much for your time. Our conversation has been we've been everywhere your past is so inspiring what you're currently working on right now is extremely powerful uh, and where you're heading and also the predictions of the world is also very very exciting as well so i just want to say thank you so much for your time um and um yeah hopefully i can have you back again uh, in the future thank you thank you so much for having me i really enjoyed this washington thank you anytime jess anytime <laughs>